Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is Board Crazy on the News for the second half of August 2017. I am D, joined by Graham and and Will. Yes, mm-hmm. news. The news master. Ooh, he's news master again. News master's back. Good to know for our post Gen Con 50. Yeah. Ooh. News update. Nothing really happened. Nothing happened. Nothing Weirdly happened. Enough. So see you next uh, two weeks uh, <laughs> That's from now. It. We'll uh, maybe have something then, but. Adios. Till then, peace. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Are right, you guys ready to go? Yeah. What's the All first right. story, Will? We're gonna start off with Fantasy Flight Games, who I believe we start off started off with last week. Uh, Creators of uh, Game of yeah, Thrones. Yeah, you're gonna say that Storm of Swords, Swords edition expansion. every time. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, uh, grab it for us, Ram. <laughs> go on. On August 18th, they announced. Um, a game called the Star Wars Legion. Of course, August 18th was, what was it, the first or second day? I think it was the second day of Gen Con. Yes. Yes. You know what there's not enough of? Star Wars stuff. You're right. Yeah. It's just... What is Star Wars, actually? Uh, I don't know. It was like a fringe... A yeah. fringe? Yeah. yeah. It's like okay. a Star Trek... Yeah, fringe. knockoff kind of thing. It's, yeah. 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 Uh, no, uh, kind of just pissed a lot of people off. Yeah. But. <laughs> this definitely does remind me of like, uh, or like, seems to me like almost like a convenient counter to what uh, Simon was doing with the Game of Thrones miniatures game. Because Star Wars Legion is a miniatures game. Mm-hmm. Uh, similar to the that Game of Thrones miniatures game, it's supposed to be for like people who don't have a lot of experience in miniature like yeah. war type games. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess. Can you play as Darth Maul? No, this is set during the original in a good movie trilogy. Mm. Yeah, the good movies. Sure, yeah. you can call it that. <laughs> uh, I will. You, you can. Yeah, good uh, movies. Episodes one, two, and three, right? <laughs> yeah, episodes yeah. the original. Yeah, the first three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, but you can't play as Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Uh, okay. Well, not play as them. I mean, they're minis. Uh, I guess you're playing. No, yeah, you get to control them. Yeah, you can control them. They're like the leaders. But either way. Uh, so the core game of Legion, mm-hmm. the starter set, if you will, mm-hmm. will have uh, 33 unpainted minis, as well as cards, you know, like up, uh, upgrade cards, uh, mm-hmm. special cards, event cards, stuff like that, uh, terrain, so you can stuff that you can play on, and a bunch of other items that you'll need, basically to play the core game. Mm-hmm. Um, a table. The main, you know, you know, the main thrust of the gameplay is that you're the you can play as either the Imperial forces, you know, the, the evil empire, or the Rebel or Alliance. Feet. It's a war game, so the yeah, it's a you know, I mean, game. the idea is that you win at any cost. But there are some cool things. One of the more interesting, um, I guess you could say, additions to the gameplay or like innovations uh, is the way the movement works in this. So a lot of miniatures games, you move each miniature, so you move your leader, and then you move all your other soldiers. These remote controlled. Ooh, no, these are not remote control. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. All right, well, that's the news video, everybody. No, uh, It's like electric football. <laughs> no, but what's cool is you move your leaders, right? Yeah. So you can choose, you can move your leaders. i uh, not exactly sure how many spaces. I imagine there are pre-designated spaces, but you move them, and then you can Fight, take like all inches. those soldiers in that leader's unit mm-hmm. and put them around that leader however you deem you know, fit. Flying V. However you want. Fly, you could be a flying V, Good. Mighty Ducks. Could you be style. flying D? Let's fly together. Flying D, figure that mm. information out. I mean, it's a D. Just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a D shape. I know, but is it vertical or is it like a horizontal D? I mean, like, I, I mean, we could discuss this at length, but let's maybe continue with the Star Wars. Yeah, I just like that that you can you don't have to worry about moving every piece. You just move your leader, and then you can just kind of take your minis and put them. Mm. Uh, I mean, I imagine there's like a limit on where you can put them. You can't. I would like, hope I'm so. moving my leader to the right, top left corner, and then all oh, my lines course. are going they down sure here. They have movement moving mine to the kitchen. Yeah. Yep, and there are a bunch of other upgrades. Uh, I mean, upgrade cards and other elements like that that allow you to um, sort of adapt the game to your strategy so you can choose a bunch of different strategies there's a bunch of like weapons you can choose for your for your men to use like rocket launchers flamethrowers hockey sticks hockey sticks i suppose i'm going for a theme here so yeah uh <laughs> you know I'm not a big star wars guy no i mean it's not a secret i don't no, know if any yeah. of us are really. mighty ducks no. though maybe a minute well yeah mighty ducks <laughs> huge mighty ducks miniature game would be fantastic yeah. why, why don't they have that why mighty ducks? Okay. put that on only d3 you, you put it on ice it'd be awesome only d3 <laughs> Anyway, when they're in uh, I mean, uh, this is probably cool if you're a Star Wars fan. I'm not a big... I don't know why they're not painted. I'll be honest. I, I understand some people like painting. Yeah. But, I'm like, it's Star Wars. You. Those things have colors. Like, they're, they're, they have, like, defined, like... 
I totally can't imagine, with you there. Yeah. Yep. I can't imagine painting stormtroopers is that hard just as long as the minis exactly. are white. Yeah. <laughs> just do like a little black, like, and that would be. It just seems like they're just saving money. I don't know. Like you said, there are people that uh, that's a huge hobby yeah. for them. Yes. is painting miniatures. That's yeah. but sure. um, you could give Luke white, a red lightsaber. You could also do it in exactly. giving both options. Wow. Give the you know oh yeah like the or just yeah edition. exactly. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, it's that's their choice. Me you know, personally, if I were into miniatures. I know I wouldn't be into the painting part, so I would yeah. probably pay even just a little bit extra yeah. if I got it pre-painted. Because yeah. I do like the look of the painted ones versus the non-painted ones, yeah. but to me, that just seems tedious to paint yeah. everything. But again, it's Star Wars, so it'll probably sell fine. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be, exactly. it'll sell great, and exactly. I mean, eventually they might actually, you know, I yeah. imagine they might, might date, one day put out a deluxe. Who'd you set. say is doing the Game of Thrones one? It's Simon. Simon's doing the Game of Thrones mini game. Mm. I think so it's Simon uh, in conjunction with some other yeah. okay. publishers. I'll see which sticks. Yeah, see, so yeah, it's a little bit of, uh, you're right, it seems like they're trying to find the... Well, a... Yeah, I can't imagine this is like a reply or like a Oh, it's a reply. It. So they put this whole thing together <laughs> really fast. No, it's just, good. it's definitely coincidence, but it's going to yeah. be interesting to see which one outsells the other, because I don't, this one is not coming to Kickstarter, hmm. whereas the Game of Thrones one had to, uh, but it'll come out sometime in early 2018. That's actually interesting. I wonder what is more popular over the past year at least game of thrones or star, star wars, wars. Yeah. I, I they're imagine, both extremely popular right yeah, now i, I mean well, star, star wars obviously is star wars well i think oh, definitely oh, brought in more money oh you think oh more money well, i guess yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense yeah merch. yeah i mean game of thrones is the most popular show on television star wars is the most popular movie series i think star wars would win yeah anyway what's the next story though <laughs> Uh, What's you have more to say about this? No, it's just, uh, oh, I, I mean, it was at Gen Con, so some people have oh. already gotten a chance to play it. Uh, early 2018, so not that long, all things considered, to wait for this one. <laughs> Next up, what's the, um, guys, let's talk about Renegade Games. Okay. We, we're we're, we're going to keep it on publishers. Uh, sure. So, talk about Fantasy Flight. We, you remember last time I talked about Renegade Games and made that tweet about how. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Oh, yes. They announced yes. a game, but the. At Gen Con, no one's there to. I forget what the something like that. Something yeah. like that. Right. Anyway, they were basically they, hinting. What they what they do? They announced that they're creating a what they call a novel fantasy setting called Overlight. Yes, it is being designed by Paul Alexander Butler and George Holland. I did research those two because I knew you guys are gonna be like, what else did they pub or design? Will <laughs> uh, what else did they design? Will? I can't find anything on... I couldn't find anything on George Harland, ha, Harland, Holland, though I do admit his... Uh, I only checked uh, for like maybe five to ten minutes in... What year was uh, Holland born? I, like I said, I couldn't find that much on him. Paul Alexander Butler is someone who's been in the board gaming industry. I believe he's worked at like stores, like big storefronts and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, he seems to have a good amount of respect in the industry, but I think it's pretty much this, this, these guys like first two... Like the, for them, it's their first uh, game, game or okay. setting because okay. it's confused. I'm confused by it all. So the the announcement is actually that they're making a product within the Overlight setting, a game within the Overlight it's setting. RPG, I thought. Yeah, yeah. So Overlight is an RPG setting, right. similar to how it's like Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons, Dragons yeah. Pathfinder, or any number of other RPGs. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're just making a board game within that setting. Not that's what I board assume. Game. It's a role playing. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Well, they say it's a role playing game within the new setting. So yeah, I. It yeah, might okay. be. It might just be like an RPG setting, like a yeah. book. Or might might be a game, but it could be. I don't know. There's not a lot of information about it. That's mm. why it's kind of hard for me to talk about. It. It's a little vague, but apparently, I mean, it was a big announcement for them um, because they're trying to like basically like you know reinvent some RPG elements and not. Like that, they even say in their in the in the official release, like they were quoting um, the game designers, and they were saying something along the lines of, the, you know, like orcs and dwarves and stuff are fun, but we wanted to do something a bit different. Yeah, it sounds like it's gonna be somewhat unique. Um, sounds neat. Um, I mean, at least I don't know the the brief description they gave of it uh, mm -hmm. on the website. It sounds like something I might be interested in checking out. I was getting nervous with more like RPGs coming out because. There's such a commitment mm -hmm. that I don't know if I want to play that many RPGs. Like we have dungeon. I mean, but you know, we play Dungeons and Dragons campaign between mm -hmm. us. But I couldn't even imagine playing another campaign right now, like Pathfinder, yeah. or then adding this on top of that, or any of the other number of RPGs that have been popping up over the last mm -hmm. couple of years. It's just so another one. 
Makes me a little bit nervous that, it, yeah, it, you know, not nervous, you know, not nervous, but just I don't know how well it's going or it's going to do or would I even want to play it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have to play, but I do want to see the setting. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I was going to start off by saying you can go to the Renegade uh, Games link that'll be in the news column, the write-up for this. Uh, I also post the links to all the source articles in the description below. If you check it out, you can go there and you can sign up for updates for Overlight. All you right. will. Mm. What else did Renegade <laughs> announce at? Well, I am not 100% sure that these games were announced at Gen Con because they released the releases for them um, on the 23rd of August, so mm. we're jumping a little bit, mm, five okay. days. Two games have to do with food. Mm. We don't have to spend a lot of time on these. The first one is called Pie Town. It's a worker placement oh, game that challenges town. its That's players great. to make delicious pies. Mm -hmm. Uh, while keeping their re their recipe secret, while you're also trying to deduce what ingredients and formulas your opponents are using. Hmm. Hmm. So that's the gist of the gameplay. Yes. So it sounds like there's a little bit of deception involved. Yeah. Hmm. Pie making deception. Well, I love deception games. It's my favorite kind of game. I like so. pie. And I like pie. So how could I not love this game? Yeah. That right? sounds mm. like it might be fun. Cool. What's the other one? Uh, I was just gonna, last thing is, uh, Pie Town is designed by Daniel Fremgen. A, he's a rookie. This is his first game. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and it'll be available for purchase in November. So if you want to make a... If you've been dying to get your hands on a board game that has to do with baking pies... Mm -hmm. it's, it's You're in luck. You. Yeah. The other... There's not much out there. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. The other board game that's... Or tabletop game that's related to food mm -hmm. is called Sunday Split. Mm-hmm. Desserts. Now, this, now I'm hungry for desserts. This game uh, is designed by Nate Bivens. Uh, mm -hmm. He was a co-designer of the game Overpowered Arena, which I have never played. Okay, I, I don't know if you guys know about it, but but regardless, so he's not a rookie. Um, the gist of this game is that you're trying to assemble the best possible ice cream sundae. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Uh, while you avoiding your bonus, while yeah. avoiding undesirable ingredients, oh, like vegetables and stuff like that. Um, Who doesn't get vegetables I, in there? Yeah, it's I, They don't go into detail how the game works, but I think the main idea is that you get points for good ingredients, that and the person logical. who has the Sunday with the most points at the end wins. Question: Yes, are these games something you play together? Get like an ice, like a, a pile of mode, <gasps> mode. situation. Oh. Yeah. We're gonna house rule. I mean, the same company. The games together. Seems it's like there's similar seems enough. natural. We can just mix all yeah. the components together. Well, as of now, they're separate games, but we can figure it out. Yeah, I like that idea. Are you hungry? Yeah, yeah. actually, guys, I'll, I'll see. You. I'll see you later. I'm, I'm getting hungry <laughs> just talking about this. So this is like diner. food games. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sunday Split will also be released in November, so they're being released the same month. So mm -hmm. get your Alamo mode going from Renegade is it Games. Sunday with an E or a Y. E Ooh, like ice cream Sunday. Maybe like banana split. Maybe they were going for that. No. Know. Okay. So yeah, food games coming out from Renegade Games. Uh, keep mm -hmm. your eyes out for those if you like to be made hungry by your board games. Uh, will. All right, guys. So yeah. earlier we mentioned CMON. Uh huh. So let's talk about them. For what a they second. do, Will? So they put a post out on Facebook of them. Um, it's a picture. They're giving an oversized check to a woman who represents uh, child advocates, and on that check it reads eleven thousand two hundred dollars mm -hmm. that they raised through their Rising Sun charity event at Gen Con. Nice, nice. Uh, Rising Sun being the new Eric M. Lang. Japan. Game, Japan, Japan, yep. yeah, Japan themed. Um, Child Advocates is the charity that got the money. They're an Indianapolis based charity, which makes sense given Gen Con is yep. in Indianapolis. Um, all in all, though, throughout all of Gen Con, they raised $26,000, a little over that, for mm. Child Advocates. So, um, good for them. Yeah, I just wanted to bring this up because, yes. Well, round of applause for Simon. Yes. Nicely done. Simon and all the other people who donated and all the other different. developers. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just Simon. They just raised the largest right. individual sum. So thank you again if you donated or, you know. Yeah, Will. Even just raised awareness. That would be good enough. Next up, guys. Mm -hmm. um, probably one of the more compelling stories to come out of Gen Con 50 this year was the report that Asmodee, the game publisher, mm -hmm. they own a bunch of publishing studios. They're going digital. Um, uh, and you know that's what they're calling it, Asmodee Digital. Real creative, oh, gosh. Yeah. great name, straightforward. Well, I, I mean, so I imagine they're going to be 
making some digital copies of their games. Exactly. They're uh, going to be developing a number of um, games for Steam, as well as Android and iOS, and I believe some are going to even come to Mac. You yeah. know. So th the idea being that they uh, will somehow be able to uh, transform some of their games, some of their board games, sure. into they digital experiences. List what games? Yeah. Well, some of the more notable ones are Scythe, which we have up here. There it is. That's going to be coming to Steam. That was maybe the biggest oh, announcement. Cool. That's awesome. Because that was a game that's so big, it's like, that's not going to be a phone game. Are these yeah. games going to be able, are they only going to be, uh, you're going to be able to play a computer, or are you going to be able to play other players, I imagine, if it's on Steam? I both. There's not a lot of information, but I, okay. I think, I think it re yeah, I think there's a good imagine chance if it's some of these will be Steam multiplayer. especially. Yeah. Or yeah. I, you know, any of the... No point in half-assing it. Yeah. Um, some of the other games, Terraforming Mars, will be cool, coming okay. to it, uh, and... My personal favorite was Ticket the Ride. Do hmm. cool. you think games going digital is kind of taking away from what board games are supposed to be? Yes. Okay. I mean, yes and no. I mean, like, I, I have no personal interest. I, I like the having the physical game. I like being in person with yeah. people I'm playing with. But I mean, you know. Yeah, I get it. I know. It totally makes sense from a money standpoint. You know, yeah. Also, I mean, the matter of convenience money. is easier to play board games there's, at, like, random people online. Exactly. Know? And there's tons of people out there where I'm sure it's not yeah. necessarily easy to get together with a group of friends real quickly and play a game. <laughs> Don't we know it? Yes. Yeah. So it's, you we know, no that it, makes, it makes sense to do it, but I'll also, I'm not, and they should do it, but mm -hmm. it just seems like sometimes the digital version probably takes away from what a board game is yeah. supposed to be. Yeah, my opinion is similar. I just think that uh, if people who want to play board games are going to play board games. I hope that this can bring in a newer like market of people who may not have been interested in playing board games, and they give them some money. Tweens. Yeah. You know, yeah, some tweens maybe who get their parents' credit card numbers and pay off the <laughs> butt for some of these freemium games. You know, mm -hmm. you can buy like yeah. currency and stuff. And, and then maybe Asmodee will have more money, and they'll say... Let's put it back into our physical space, and it could be good for the business. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I hope that it just raises aware raises awareness for mm -hmm. board games in general, and makes it more popular. Yeah, we get that board crazy home game made. Let's move on to <laughs> let's move on to Gen Con uh -huh. again. Fifty. Last thing we're wow. talking about Gen Con fifty is guys, it broke a bunch of records. No kidding. Uh, Ooh, it's attendance this year. Thought that. Yes, let's do some attendance. Like you know how you like. There's like a thing full of jelly beans. You guess how many jelly yeah. beans? I want you guys to guess how many I'm gonna people. I'm going to guess 50. 50. Ten, 50 people at Gen Con 50. Price is right rules. Uh, 49. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 51? How does that work? Uh, I you, probably want to go over no, it. I'll, I'll take a serious one. guess. Okay, yeah. You want me to go Fine. first? I have no idea. I have no idea what that kind of... I don't know what you get capacity is for I mean, where they have a bunch it. of different I mean like part of it's at Lucas are you asking how many people yep. total went in and out of Gen Con yeah they totally have a number weird. of they have the exact number of the amount of people who attended I would guess 15,000 that seems is, low is it I don't know I was, I was, uh, 15,000 is his Steve I don't know I would guess it'd be closer to like 150, 200,000. Oh, really? I have no idea. Yeah. It was the official tally was 207,979 oh, people. Some of the people. videos coming out of Gen Con were insane. See, how am I supposed to know that you that's were invited? What, I know, right? I know. When they open the doors and you see the flood moving in. Yeah, but you look at that and you're like, I don't know how many people that is. That could be any number of people. It could be 80, it could be 80 people. It could yeah. be a million people. I don't know. <laughs> Um, a million people. That number, 207,000, is up 4% from last year's. So not the biggest jump in attendance, but oh, still the biggest they ever had. Not insignificant. Um, also, for the first time in the history of the convention, all the, in all the attendee badges were sold out. Every single one. Wow. So That's it's really them. impressive. I mean, it's the 50th one. Yep. People like anniversaries, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm not surprised. Yep, but it's the 50th hopefully anniversary it of Board stays Crazy. Stays that yeah, 50th boy. anniversary. Yep, it's the 50th anniversary of Board Crazy. So I um, always said I don't know why we need a 50th Geneva Convention. I think the first one did just fine, but they proved me wrong. <laughs> every year they come back, and every year people go. Is he still going? Yeah, he is. All right. <laughs> if you were unable to attend this year's Gen Con, like us, like us, unfortunately, uh, next year's is from August 2nd to the 5th. And I imagine it'll be just as cool. So everyone uh, knows fifty-one is better than fifty. Yeah, yeah. Not less than a year to wait, guys. We are hoping to be there next year. If you got to go to Gen Con this year, we're jealous. And just again, congratulations to Gen Con. Yeah, fifty is insane. And maybe we'll see you next year. Yes, hopefully. Graham, it's holding us back. 
And Holding you back. You guys are staying right here. <laughs> and finally. We're chained down. Go on. Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek. Their the poster website. series, guys. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Posters. And the next two are mm-hmm. out. Yeah, or not been, out. You know, the previews are out. Been, yes. Previewed. Uh, they we, look like. We yeah. mentioned last week that uh, Rage. Board Game Geek was doing an artist series of posters from board game artists in the industry. That looks like Star Wars minis. I'm getting it Star Wars minis. <laughs> so I'm going to show poster. you guys here. Uh, hold, hold on a second. Uh-huh. Yeah, here we go, guys. All right, so... <sighs> this mm-hmm. was last week's Mysterium. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's uh, creepy. That's really, that's really yeah. cool. So, uh, the Mysterium poster... Mm-hmm. Is really neat. You can see it's red against yeah. the house on the hill, the skeletal hand. That's really cool. Who made it? Uh, this one was made by Ian O'Toole. Okay. Nice job, Ian. Ian of Tool. Ian O'Toole. This one is awesome. Yeah, that one, that really one is really cool. That one looks. Uh, and then the latest one, this one might be my favorite one. I just never played the game. It's uh, Galaxy Trucker. Galaxy Trucker. Check it out. Breaker, breaker. Mm. Isn't that neat? That I don't is know if it's my favorite one, but it's really freaking cool. No, that one's really nice. It reminds me of, yeah, like it, it's cool how it's like almost like Fallout or like, you know, yeah, like 50s, no, yeah, 50s, 50s like theme, World War II, yeah, post World War II themed yeah. artwork. That's, uh, oh, that's dope. I can't wait to buy some of these. These posters are really cool. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, you, you're, you were watching along with us. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I'm going to put these up. Who made this one? This one, uh, so this one was drawn by, uh-huh. created by, uh, Quan Chai Moria. Are you confident in that pronunciation? Nope. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a cool name. Yeah. I mean, uh, it'll his sh- name. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool name. Uh, no, that's a, that's a really cool Japanese illustration. Yeah. That's. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna be getting that one. Oh yeah. I think I'm still partial to the uh, the yeah, Agricola one, but Agricola ones. Yeah, that's, that's, that's these are all these are all good so far. Yeah, he's known this. Uh, Quan Chai is known for his work on Catacombs, Kadama, and Flip Ships. So. Okay. Uh, they did announce that they're going to have four different sizes during the pre-order period. Okay. Uh, the only ones that will be available past the pre-order, though, will be the 12 by 18s which okay. are pretty standard size. So, mm-hmm. Okay, so, so they do have some of the prices here. Oh. If you get the full set of four at 12 by 18 uh, it'll be um, $100. It's not terrible. If you do the 24 by 36 and get the full set of four, it'll be $300. Hmm. If you want one 12 by 18, it'll be 30 bucks. 30. Okay. Um, and then the 24 by 36 will be 80 each. So. Do you think they'll accept Monopoly money being a board game site? No, but they might accept Board Game Geek Gold, which is the currency on their site. Oh. And I doubt that's what they're going to accept. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. But yeah. very cool. No, it, they are cool. cool. Uh, check back in September for when they go on pre order uh, because these are going to be like a. Is there a specific date? Just they don't have it yet. September. Um. So yeah, that's it this for this week, guys. Gen Con had a lot of great news. I couldn't get to all of it. Uh, tons and tons of games were announced. Um, tons of games were shown off. I believe there was a new ticket to ride. Yeah, at Gen Con, ticket, ticket. like an old West French like oh. flip sided board expansion oh, type thing. Yeah, I was like, okay, which is an interesting huh. combination. Cool. Old West French. Because when I think of old West, I also think of France. Apparently, yeah, yeah, you know, always. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Um, Yep, <laughs> just a lot of really cool games being announced. Uh, yeah, so Gen Con's a big deal, but that's gonna do it, I think, for this edition of Board Crazy on the mm-hmm. News. Uh, yeah, so please, uh, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't yet for some reason. Um, yeah, uh, please check out our website, boardcrazygames.com, for all of our videos and reviews and news articles and whatnot. Uh, social media links. Uh, somewhere nearby, you can find those. Our Facebook, our Twitter. Yeah, they're all down below in the description. Mm-hmm. Our LinkedIn. <laughs> you should know uh, this by now. Our LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, of course, uh, come back in two weeks' time if you like these videos for our uh, first half of September news video. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Tortuga 1667 up uh, this week. That's a good game. Check that out. Exciting times. Exciting times. Yeah, it should be. It'll be public today, same day. Yeah. Busy time. Bound, it was bound to happen, right? But if you want to be ahead of the, uh, you know, ahead of the curve, you can check out our website on Wednesdays for. Uh, That's when the, we post our, our videos. Yeah. yeah, they're up early, and the reviews are up early. So 
Yeah, check that out. And also check out our Kickstarter article on there. Cover Me, I think, hit its goal. D. Sweet. Uh, our games are still up and going, so Your you can check those out. moguls. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Did you back it? No, you won't say. Yes, yeah, so check those out. Uh, <laughs> cool. All right, until next time, adios. Goodbye. I need to say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs>